Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about what I like to think of as my ultimate helmet cam setup. So I'll be covering the equipment that I use, the camera, the camera mount, the microphone. I've, <laughs> I've been through a few microphones. Uh, and then also the settings, both video and audio. And I struggled with audio for a long, long time. Getting audio that was good enough to use out of my helmet cam setup seemed like it was the hardest thing. And in the end, it really came down to two settings and they're sort of hidden settings. They aren't particularly obvious, but they made all the difference for me. So I'll share those with you too. So this video may be a little bit longer. Use the chapter markers in the description underneath the video and you can jump around to the sections that are most interesting to you. And yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let's talk camera equipment and mic. I'm using a GoPro and I'm typically using this GoPro 10 on my helmet. You can see all of the dead bugs on it. Um, the other two items that I often use are the uh, GoPro Max lens mod, which is this uh, little item down here on the right, and then the GoPro Media mod. Let's talk about the Max lens mod first. Uh, it's an accessory lens and it replaces the lens cover on the GoPro. So you twist the lens cover, pop it off, and then you pop the, the Max lens mod onto the camera. And it has some advantages and it also has some drawbacks. The advantage is it gives you a wider, uh, a wider angle view, a wider field of view. And it also allows you to use uh, a type of leveling uh, or image stabilization called uh, Horizon Lock. And what that does is it locks the picture with the horizon roughly level, regardless of the orientation of the camera. So you could turn the camera upside down and to the viewer, the picture still looks the same. The horizon still level. And what that means is when you have it on your helmet and you're riding, like let's say you're riding through a corner, the, the, the scene stays relatively level, but you see the movement of the bike. Um, the, the drawback is, I guess it's a couple of things. Um, some people like that look, other people feel like it's too stabilized and they don't like the look, look of it. Uh, but the, the main drawback when you use the Max Lens Mod is it limits the video settings on the camera. You can only use it in certain modes and with certain settings. That's sort of a whole nother video in itself. Maybe I'll link uh, in the description. To, uh, to another video that talks more about the Max Lens Mod. I don't wanna to spend too much time on that here, but um, maybe I'll just show you some quick footage. So this was shot with the Max Lens Mod and the Horizon Lock turned on, and you can see how the scene stays relatively stable, but as, the, as we lean into a corner, you see the bike move, but the horizon stays fairly level. Alternatively, this was shot with the standard lens and you can see that as we turn and as we lean, you get the horizon, uh, that perspective on the horizon and the image, you know, shifting the way that you sort of see it. When your head turns, things aren't level. So they're just two different, uh, two different looks, two different effects. Um, one of the reasons that I that I don't like to to use it as much um, is because if I'm riding somewhere and I ha I'm using my helmet cam. And uh, you know, I might shoot the footage, I get there, and then I might pop the camera off my helmet and wanna do other things, but then I don't want it on the camera. And so having to put it on and take it off all the time is kind of a hassle. So, um, so you know, it, it's a trade-off. You're just gonna have to, uh, to, to look at the, the footage from, you know, from, from using it and from not using it and decide what you like the best and what you think your priorities are. I think you can make really good videos either way. They're just gonna have a different feel to them. Okay, so let's jump over to the media mod. So the media mod is this thing that looks like a case up here and it basically is a case that slides over the GoPro and it adds a couple of different things. It adds a microphone on the front, a microphone on the back, and then a set of connectors. So I'm gonna to jump to the next photo. And I'm using photos here because I thought it would be easier for you to see the details than me kind of trying to juggle these little parts. Um, so this is what the back of the media mod looks like. This is uh, an additional microphone, which when, I'm, when, I'm, uh, when I have it set up as a helmet cam, I'm not using these ex external internal microphones. I'm using an external microphone, and you can see a microphone connector here. So there are these three little doors, and the bottom door uh, is actually a 3.5 millimeter jack for your external microphone that's gonna go inside your helmet. So this is what it looks like on the camera. You can see the camera mount there, microphone plugged in. 
Um, this is my helmet. It's an AGV K6. I happen to be using a, a, a mount for the GoPro that's uh, made by a company called Chin Mounts. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but it's a 3D printed mount that's made ex especially for this helmet. And if you go to their website, they make mounts uh, that are custom made for a bunch of uh, you know pretty popular helmets. But this is a mount that uh, it, it gives you a standard GoPro mount and it attaches with a double-sided 3M adhesive. And so with that mount, I use just the standard GoPro hardware, the little clip, and then I have uh, the two little arms here, which give me three joints essentially that I can use to position the camera, uh, you know, forward, back, up, or down. Uh, so this is what the mount looks like on the helmet. You can see it's positioned, um, you know, right in the front of the chin bar. And then this is what it looks like with the camera attached. And so just a note on the positioning of the camera. I like to have it um, as centered on the bike as I can get it. And one of the disadvantages of the GoPro in these mounts is the lens is off center just a little bit. And um, you, you'll notice it in some of the videos. You know, you'll see it with the rear view mirrors. You know, one's a little, uh, a little <laughs> offset compared to the other because the, you know, the lens isn't in the center. Not a big deal. But uh, in terms of the camera positioning, there, there is something that, um, that I think is important here. At least it is for me in the way that, that, that I work. Um, I like to have the camera on the front of the helmet positioned just high enough that I can see the top of the LCD screen in the back and also the, uh, the LED. So there's a little LED right here. There's another one on the back. And then of course there's the, the LCD screen. And so I'm not, I'm not running the camera 100% of the time that I'm riding. I might go for a three hour ride and record 10 minutes of video. So I'm turning the camera on, I'm starting recording, I'm stopping recording, I'm turning the camera off, all of those sorts of things. And so I want some visual feedback to know that when I click the on button, the camera actually turned on, or that when I click the record button, it's actually recording. And so having it positioned just high enough that I can see the LED on the back and the top of the LCD screen gives me that visual feedback that I need to know that, um, you know, that the camera is doing what I want it to do. Okay, so let's talk about microphone. So the first thing with, uh, with the microphone is I think you're going to want to have a microphone in your helmet. Um, there's just so much wind on a motorcycle, and if you want to capture your voice, it, it, it almost has to be in your helmet if you're riding at any speed. So the challenge is figuring out where in your helmet to put it. You want it so that there's not wind blowing directly on the microphone, and ideally you don't want it just right in front of your mouth, but there's just not that much space in a helmet. So um, I've experimented and I've found that for me at least, and with my helmet, the best place is on the right side tucked behind the right cheek pad with just the, um, the front of the microphone sticking out. And then this little fuzzy thing is called a dead cat and it's basically just a wind blocker. And so um, I bought just a generic uh, pack of, I think it was like a five pack of wind cats, or dead cats, I'm sorry, uh, a five pack of dead cats off of Amazon for, I don't know what it was, $10 or something. And so, uh, so I have the microphone covered with that. Uh, and obviously it's tucked behind that right cheek pad. Let me click here and show you sort of how it's set up. So now we're looking in through the bottom of the helmet. The left side is the front. This is the dead cat. Um, this particular microphone, the cord, uh, the first kind of three or four inches of cord are covered with a, a little bendable uh, uh, metal, metal piece that, that allows you to position it in a certain way. But it also makes for a, a pretty secure thing to tape. And so I have the microphone taped to the styrofoam inside the helmet. This is with the cheek pad pulled out here. This is the end of that little metal piece. And then you can see the, the cable for the microphone coming around. And so it actually comes through the, the hole in the cheek pad where the helmet strap goes. And so uh, you can see again, this is the, the microphone, the right cheek pad. Um, this is the hole where the strap is, so the cable's coming out. And on this particular helmet, it's super convenient because there's actually a little pocket sewn in to the, to the cheek pad here. Um, and so I've, I've rolled up all of the extra microphone cable and just stuffed it into this little pocket, which is super convenient. My other helmets don't have that, so that's one thing that's nice about this helmet. Um, if you don't have that little pocket, you can roll it up and tape it underneath the, the cheek pad there but on this helmet, I just stuff it in there. So the cable's coming down here, it's all rolled up there, and then it loops back down and around, and then it's ready to be plugged into the GoPro. 
So this is what it looks like uh, with the camera mounted and the mic plugged in. The cable comes down from that you know, right side, uh, and then it comes right into that 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the, uh, on the GoPro, actually on the GoPro Media Mod. So one note uh, about microphones. Um, I've, I've experimented with some high-end microphones, some cheap microphones. Um, in the end, I think a microphone with low sensitivity is best, but uh, just a note on the connectors here. So this is called a TRS connector, and it has these two little stripes and this one ring here in the middle. Um, you'll find some microphones, and they're typically the microphones that are uh, associated with uh, microphone headsets, that will have three, three stripes and then two rings, and those are called TRRS, R being the ring. So you do not want the kind that has two rings because when you plug it into your GoPro, it's probably not going to work. You want two stripes um, and one ring. Okay, so this is the microphone that I'm using currently. Um, it is uh, just an inexpensive Chinese mic uh, that I got off of Amazon. It's being pitched as a moto vlogging microphone. Um, there's nothing special about a mic for moto vlogging other than the fact that it's going to have the kind of connector that you want. And then it, it's of a size or a form factor that's going to fit uh, into your, your helmet. Um, and so this one kind of checks all of the boxes. I like the fact that it had this little metal bendable, they're calling it gooseneck here. Um, it gave me something kind of solid to, to tape uh, into the helmet. And then I've just pulled this clip off and I don't use that. So I've also tried uh, expensive like Rode lavalier microphones and they work really well too. Um, but the cheap ones I feel like are, are you know, essentially just as good. And you, it, it seems kind of weird, but you want a low sensitivity microphone for this application. There's some microphones that are very high sensitivity and they'll pick up the smallest little sounds, but then they don't do well in a really loud environment. Because they're so sensitive, you'll get all kinds of clipping, and distortion and whatnot when the noise is loud. And so when you're on a motorcycle and you've got the wind blowing past your helmet, it's a really noisy environment. And the GoPro to a certain extent is going to, to process the audio and try to do some sort of noise reduction and balancing and whatever. But I've found that these, um, you know, that these cheap microphones work, uh, you know, work reasonably well, and they're not super expensive. So, you know, if you break it or lose it or you know whatever, you're you're not out a lot of, of money. Okay, so let's talk settings. We'll start with video settings. So I'm going to turn the camera on, and most of the settings that we're going to be looking at are saved inside the little video presets. And I happen to use the preset called POV for my helmet cam settings. So if we click in to POV, we're looking at uh, resolution and frames per second, or frame rate, lens, and hyper smooth. And these are sort of the key video settings. And I'm just going to show you what I use. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the video settings. Um, I do want to highlight the fact that the settings that you choose in terms of resolution and frame rate. Um, and in terms of the, the hyper smooth or the stabilization, uh, they will affect quite a bit the way the camera processes images and the quality of those images. So rather than that, I mean, that's a whole video on, it, on its own. And rather than talk about that in detail, I'm gonna link to a website. Um, there's a YouTuber and a GoPro employee named Abe Kisselwitz, and he has a website that goes into super detail about all of the GoPro settings, and it has um, a table of settings. I'll show it on the screen here. Um, so go to his website and look at, look at that. Um, so I, I use uh, 4K24 for my helmet cam. I've been using SuperView. Um, I also shoot in wide occasionally, uh, but SuperView gives the, the maximum field of view. And then I have the Hyper Smooth set on standard. Scheduled capture, duration, hindsight, timer, zoom, none of those are particularly relevant for us. As we scroll down, we get to Protune. <clears throat> so I have the bitrate set on high. That means it's going to be a larger file size, but higher quality. I have the shutter set on auto. Um, I have EV comp set on negative 0.5, so a half stop underexposed. 
and that just gives a little more color saturation and it keeps things like white clouds from losing detail. I have the white balance set to auto. Occasionally I will set that to 5000 degrees Kelvin, which is sunlight temperature, daylight temperature. Uh, but auto should work for you most of the time. And then this is the thing that's, that I think is kind of key here. The shutter auto, ISO minimum 100, ISO maximum 400. So I would set the 400 maximum if I'm shooting in daylight in the middle of the day. So if it's a bright sunny day, I'm going to have that set on 400. Um, if it starts to get darker, if it's sunrise, sunset, cloudy day, I'm going to be going through tunnels, you know, anything like that. I'll bump up the maximum ISO to 800 or 1600, depending on the, the circumstances. And so some people with GoPros um, set a shutter speed and they want to basically have a certain ratio for their shutter speed and their frame rate. And I'm shooting at 24 frames per second because I like the feel that that gives. That's the lowest possible frame rate. If you look at the options, there's 24, 30, 60, 120, and 240. Um, the faster frame rates capture motion uh, more cleanly, if you will. Um, and then they also give you a faster frame rate. So if you want to do slow motion or something, it, it's easier to do slow motion. I'm not worried about that stuff with my helmet cam, cam setup. And I actually like the feel that the 24 frames a second gives. It feels a little bit more like traditional film and it gives a little bit of motion blur, particularly along the edges of the frame as you're moving. The trees or the things along the side of the road tend to blur a little bit more, and I actually like that. So I, I use that 24 frames a second. And I keep the shutter on auto. As I mentioned before, there's some people that shoot for you know a ratio of, of you know shutter speed twice the frame rate or you know that sort of thing, and they end up having to use neutral density filters and go through all of this stuff. And for me, my priority is to just keep it as simple as I can. I don't want to do a lot of post-production. I don't want to deal with filters. I just want to have a helmet cam that I can turn on and know that I'm getting, you know, good video. So these are the settings that I, uh, that I would recommend that you start with. Um, so again, going back to the ISO, you know, if it gets dark, I'll bump that up to 800 or 1600, you know, if it's, uh, if it's uh, lower light. Uh, the sharpness I have on medium, the color I have is natural. Um, Okay, so that, that basically covers it for the video settings. Okay, so let's talk audio settings. This is kind of where the rubber meets the road, and this is the thing that I finally figured out after so much experimentation. I kind of feel like an idiot that I didn't, uh, didn't realize these things before, but I'm going to share them with you. So let's go back to the sort of main screen. So we have our, our video preset down here, POV, and we know that there's some audio settings in there but there's actually another area where there's some audio settings that are hidden. And if we swipe down and then we swipe across and we see preferences and we click on preferences, if we scroll down, first of all, under general, there's quick capture. And quick capture is the setting that allows you to just click the, um, the record button here on the top and have the camera turn on, start recording. If you have quick capture off, you actually have to turn the camera on using the, the power button first, let the camera boot up, and then you can start recording using the, the shutter button on the top. And so one of the things that I discovered, and I don't know if they've fixed this in recent firmware updates, but the problem that I was having is that when I was using quick capture, I'd be riding along, the camera would be turned off, I'd click the shutter button, the camera would turn on, and it would start recording. But for whatever reason, it would not recognize the fact that I had my microphone plugged in. So my helmet mic was not recording audio. It was recording audio using the internal microphone on the GoPro, and the wind noise was horrible, and you couldn't hear my voice. And so it would do that intermittently. Sometimes it would work with my mic. Sometimes it wouldn't. And so I thought that I had a loose connection with the, with the microphone and the camera, and so I spent so much time messing with that. So just make your life simple and turn quick capture off because then you definitely won't have that problem. So it could be that GoPros fixed that. I haven't tested it and whatever, but I've just changed my workflow so that I don't have to worry about that at all. Okay, so, uh, so again, we're in this preferences menu. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see mods. 
And mods would be the max lens mod, which we don't have on the camera right now, so that's hidden. And then the other setting is media mod. And so that's a, a mic setting here, and it says standard mic. And if you click that, it's not changeable, right? There's nothing there. But this refers to the external microphone that you're using. And so a standard mic would be um, a mic just like we're using, like, uh, like a little lavalier mic that would plug in. So that setting looks good. And I'm going to come back to this because it's actually not good, but it, it looks like it should work. Okay, so let's go back and talk about the other settings first, and then I'm going to circle back around to that one. Okay, so we're, we're back in our video presets. I'm gonna click on POV, and we're gonna scroll down to the bottom part of Protune, and there's some audio settings. So the first one is raw audio. Raw audio allows you to record, in addition to your video track, a separate audio track. And if you click on that, it gives you off, low, medium, and high, and this is uh, the amount of processing that the camera does to the audio track. And so if you have that turned on and you record a video, you're going to get a video file and then you're going to get an audio file with whatever level of processing you have set there. I don't use that because I don't want to have to sync audio after I record the video. Um, so I just keep that off. Right now the wind is set to auto and the media mod is set to camera mic. So if you click on that, the options are the camera mics, which are the ones built into your actual GoPro, the back, which is this back mic on the media mod, and the front, which is the front mic on the media mod. And so the thing that's tricky about all of this is, whoops, is these settings are here now. Where'd it go? Uh, these settings are, are visible here now, but once you plug a microphone in, if I can get the little door open, there we go. So once you plug a microphone in, the, the wind is now in A and the media mod is now in A. So that's telling you that the wind setting, whether it was on or off or auto, um, only applies to the microphones that are internal microphones on the camera or the media mod. Once you plug your mic in, those settings disappear. So those things aren't relevant. And so what I was doing is, you know, I'd go for a ride, I'd plug in my mic, mount the camera, on my helmet, go for a ride, come back, unplug the mic, take the camera off, download the video, look at it, and then I'd be looking at the settings like this where I'd actually see those as available options. And so I thought things like the wind reduction were actually uh, in use when my mic was plugged in, but in fact, they, they're not. And so let's come back to this main menu and then swipe across to preferences. And this is the other really tricky thing because if you'll remember when we came to mods before, and we clicked on it, it said standard mic. And now it says standard mic plus. And if we click on it, instead of it not working, now we get a menu because the mic is plugged in. And the options are standard mic, standard mic plus, powered mic, powered mic plus, and line in. And so we want the setting to be standard mic. And if you'll recall, when we came back to it, it had switched to standard mic plus. And this was the thing that was driving me crazy, that was making, I was having horrible audio issues and it all comes down to this. This is like the secret setting. So standard mic would be a lavalier microphone that you plug in. Standard mic plus is the same. It's a lavalier mic that you would plug in, but then it boosts, the camera boosts the mic sensitivity by 20 decibels. And so the problem that I was having was all kinds of clipping and wind noise because the camera was taking the audio and boosting it up to the point where it was actually sounding horrible. And so the other options, powered mic, would be for a mic with, uh, with a battery in it. Well, if we can get to it, it keeps jumping past it. Uh, that would be for a self-powered microphone, which is a mic that has a battery in it. Powered Mic Plus is a battery-powered mic where the camera boosts the, the gain by 20 decibels. And then Line In would be um, audio equipment, like if you're plugging in a mixer or something like that. So we want it on standard mic. 
And so that's really like the biggest secret that I've found. The thing that made the most difference with the quality of the audio was that standard mic setting. So that's really the trick. When you have your mic plugged in, you wanna make sure for your helmet cam that this media mod setting in preferences is, is still set on standard mic. The problem that I was having is that I would think that it was set on standard mic, but it would switch to standard mic plus. So I know this is kind of, <laughs> it sounds a little bit complicated, but if you, if you play with it, if you go into the menu and you plug it in and you, you know, you, you go through this process, I think, um, I think it'll all make sense. And it, it's, it's such a simple thing, but it makes such a difference in terms of the quality of the audio. At least that's been my experience. So I hope this helps. Um, if, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. Uh, if you have questions, put them in the, the comments below. I've tried to make this, it's kind of a long video. I've tried to cover as much as I can from kind of a basic level all the way up to, to you know, to wherever we are now. Um, so anyway, hope you guys like it. Thanks for watching.